Hello my beautiful creatives and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B and I'm a creativity coach hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Now let me tell you what I'm doing because I apologize I did try filming this once already but forgot to turn my microphone on and didn't want to do a voiceover to be honest, quite honest with you. So let me tell you what I'm doing. I have over the last two years purchased most of the, pre the Prisma watercolor sets. They, they look just like this. They come in sets of 12, 12 different half pans. And I, to be quite honest with you, I love them. I think they're economical. I think they're really colorful. I love the little tins that they come in. But I had collected so many of them, not to mention the Prisma colors, but I also purchased the two original sets from Jane Davenport that looked very similar to this, except they come into like pastel -y colors. Uh, I think there's a gold one and a teal one is the ones that I had purchased originally looks very similar and I had so many half pans of paint and it was very unfeasible for me to take multiple tins with me um, out in the world while I was trying to, to make my art portable so what I did was I took all of the paints and I basically was able to create this 48 pan set Okay, and this is the pan that I take with me when I go to like big art classes or really long art nights or things like that. This, this is one of the things I tuck into my bigger art kit. It's super handy, super excellent. However, something's kind of been pestering me a little bit. I want my art to be more easily portable. I want it to be something that I can just chuck into my purse and I can take with me and it could just go with me wherever I'm at. And if I have a couple minutes or maybe I'm sitting at a coffee shop and I didn't think I was gonna be a coffee shop, but I am now, it would be nice to like have some art supplies with me to like play. So what I'm doing today is when I collected my Prisma sets and my um, Jane Davenport set, sets and created this 48 palette, when I did that, I had this whole row of stragglers. These were all colors that did not fit into the 48 pan, just because there was only space for 48 colors. Since then, I have purchased two more sets, which was Odyssey and Pastel Dreams. Now, because I've purchased those, I now have this many, which I, I believe is 44. I have 44 colors that are not in a palette. Now I guess theoretically I could always buy another 48 palette and just call that good and take that with me. However, with the idea of making my art more portable, I decided I was going to take these colors and audition them into two art palettes, two 12 art palettes. So I'll have 24 colors with me. One will be all of my skin tones and all of the colors I would use for doing faces. And the other one would be all of my brights, my rich, my, um, what do you call it? The, all of the other colors that I want. They're like vib vibrant, vivacious, really deep, yummy colors. So one will be my skin tones and one will be essentially my version of like my brights. And I've decided I'm gonna use these two palettes to do that, these two tins to do that, the Classics and the Odyssey. So I'm gonna set these two aside and I'm sure I'll come up with a use for them in the future. So to make this work, what I've done is I have created this little guy. And basically this is a scrap of watercolor paper that I have, paint, I have drawn out a rough grid of rectangles. So that way I could swatch every single one of these colors in order and now what I have done so that I can remember which color is which in case like I fall in love with this color and it should, I need to replace it. I know what color it is because I've marked the side of the half pan with the number that correlates with the number on the, the actual Prisma swatch. Now, the Jane Davenport set was not like that. They did not have numbers on it. They just had names. So what I did is I created my own numbering system by simply taking all of the Jane Davenport colors, putting them into my computer and just numbering them from one to however many there were. So those ones have a JD 17, which is Jane Davenport 17. And I can always go find that corresponding color 
by going back to my computer. However, when I was swatching my Jane Davenport and my Prisma colors, I noticed that for the most part, the Jane Davenports were duplicates of Prisma colors. I don't know if that was meant to be that way or if Jane Davenport paints really are Prisma paints with her name on it for her own branding. I don't know how that worked, but um, that was my experience. So that's why a lot of these kind of sit out here because they're actual duplicates of ones that actually already were in my 48 palette. So now that I've made my little swatch O colors, I have then flipped it over and it's messy because this is temporary, but I have put the number like this number 25, I put it back on the on the back side of the swatch for number 25. So there's number 25. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually cut all of these out, all of these out, and I'm gonna put them into the order that is pleasing to me. And I'm gonna first decide which ones I think should be in the skin tone one, the skin tone palette, and then also which ones I believe should be in the my version of the Brights palette. Okay, so instead of making you watch that whole thing, watch me cut this out. I will um, do that off camera, but I'll be right back to actually let you watch me figure out what colors go where. I'll be right back. Okay, so that was super duper fast. So all I did was cut all of my little chips out, my little paint chips out, and I'm going to just sort them. The way that I'm sorting them right now is I'm going to sort them. Um, I want all of my whites in one pile. I want all of my neutrals in another pile, which are my grays and blacks. I want all of my browns in another pile. Greens in one pile, blues, reds, orange, yellow. I basically want to take all the different colors, color groups, and put them in their own little piles. So that kind of gives me an idea of what I've got. Pink will go with red, yellow, red, orange. You're kind of an orange. I struggle with you a little bit because you're kind of an orange. You're yellow, you're brown, you're brown. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. Black, brown, red. Purple, purple, blue, purple, brown. Put brown down here. Brown, you're kind of a, we've got two here. You're an orange, you're kind of a yellow, orange, purple, pink, pink, blue, green, and green. Okay, so now I know. So the classics is gonna be my my neutrals and the odyssey the box marked odyssey are going to be my brights so i know that i need to come up with two sets of 12. i'm going to do my my skin tones first so i'm going to choose kind of this beigey white and i want a gray and a black for because they're neutrals i want a light pink and a lippy kind of pink i think i want these two yellowy and orange it's kind of a yellow that's a peachy um, I thought about doing a light blue for shadows, a light lavender for shadows, um, and then brown. I want a lot of brown, so let me let me think about this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, blue, you're out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four. Yes, I did just count on my fingers because that's what I do. So here are all of my browns and I want that one and that one and that one. I kind of like that one. It seems a little more neutral here. Neutral ear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I can do 12. I want another shade of brown. These are pretty similar. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so there's twelve colors there. Okay. 
Okay, am I making a mistake here? Do I want this rusty color? See, this rust is really different. And I kind of like it, so I think we're gonna make that work. So we'll set those aside. And I wanna put them in order. Pink, purple, white. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll put these in the classics tin. And the ones I know I'll need to pull, I'll know by flipping them over. These are the order I want them in. So I just need to find the corresponding half pan that goes along with each number. So now that I found all my colors, I'm gonna just set them inside of the little tin. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Two, four, six, seven, I can fit 14 in. Oh, hallelujah! I just realized that if I fill my tins myself, even though these tins only come, these tins only come with 12 colors, if I put my colors in myself, I can actually fit two more half pans in there. So I want to choose um, two more colors. Okay, so now we have our full set. Now, okay, so all of my neutrals, or they're not neutrals, all of my skin colors are going to go into the, the box marked the classics. So there is my palette for my skin tones. Now we will also create um, a swatch card for that. We'll do that in a few minutes. Um, so that is my skin tone. Now let's figure out, we'll just sweep these aside. because We won't need those again for a while probably ever, maybe. And then I'm gonna choose 14 more for my brights. Yeah, I think we'll probably just go with that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. So now let's find the corresponding colors. Okay. I'm gonna sweep all of my little swatches and the half pans I did not use out of the way. So there is my my versions of brights, and those are my skin tones. Now I'm going to create the swatches for those by simply taking the swatches that come with the container and using that as a template to cut out a new one. Uh, you can do that by hand with some scissors or do like I didn't use a paper cutter and then use a quarter rounder. I used a half inch cor corner rounder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get really super scientific here because I have the, it cut out, but I want there to be the spaces. I need some squares to be putting my swatches in. Okay, so that's my scientific study there. You see that? I just lined up with the edges of each pan. Use my little quilting ruler. Line up the side of my card with one line and the top with one of the marks that I made. And then I'm just going to take it and half it, which I know that this is I don't know what the measurement for that is. I just counted squares. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm kind of sort of getting my ruler as close to, as possible. So there is that one. Now, the second one's gonna be even more scientific than the first one was, and I'm just gonna line them up against each other and just use my marks that way. Even though I see they're not straight, they're not perfect squares, which I'm fine with. So there's my side ticks and the one down the center there's one and let's do the same thing okay so now that that is 
done, we are now ready to actually swatch our colors for our palettes. Should be easy to do. So grab a small brush and let's start with apparently the brights because that's where my hand went. Just to make my life a little bit easier so I can see what I'm doing. it okay this makes me incredibly happy so we're just gonna set it aside to let it dry I'm gonna set those aside so they can dry There you have it. Those are what my color is going to look like. I realize now that this is really the, the color I thought was night, like the Dina Wakely night instead of black. I think I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to let myself be okay with that. Um, and over here, I dripped a big drop of water on it. So um, I think it's going to be okay. I may have to come back in and kind of mush the colors a little bit because I want them to make sure that they're really true to the color that I've selected and not the colors mixing together. So I'm just going to kind of put that color back where I want it. Essentially move the water around so it kind of blends again. There we go. I think that's okay. Those are my two new watercolor palettes that I will be using when I am wanting to just have color palettes in my purse. I guess kind of sounds crazy, but my whole goal is to make art portable, to make it as portable as possible. So I'm going to try this. I also have some other ideas on ways that I can make art more portable, but this video I think is probably long enough. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section down below. I will let you know how this works. Most of these colors I've never used before. I think they're gorgeous. I love the selection of colors that I have. Um, so I think I need to go out in the world and create some portraits and some other cool things. Maybe just some abstract backgrounds because I do abstract backgrounds a lot with my watercolors. It's my favorite thing to do. And I will share those probably on my Instagram channel. So if you're not a subscriber there already, please feel free to go over my Instagram and subscribe there. There'll be a link to that down in the information box down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you every single bloomin' day. I just love you to Reese's Pieces. So until next time, bye for now.